Okay, good afternoon, everyone uh, who's joining us today. We've got uh, a large group of people signed up for this webinar. I'm hoping everyone can hear me now. Uh, we are going to allow a few minutes for people to actually come and sign in and get online. We've got people joining us on the webinar directly on Zoom. We've also got people joining us on YouTube and we've got people joining us via the Facebook page as well. As that time goes on, we'll make sure all those questions that you're asking on those different forums will be answered. While people are joining in, I'm going to introduce the presenters today and one will join us shortly as well. Firstly, I'm going to uh, introduce you to Helena from uh, Masaryk University in Brno, who's the head of the international office. And Susanna, one of her amazing team in the Czech Republic's second biggest city. Uh, Susanna is actually going to take the lead initially and we're going to do the presentation for us. Then we're going to have two students joining us. We've got Dylan. Say hello, Dylan. Dylan is from the UK, a British student studying at Masaryk University. And joining us shortly will be Ali, uh, fingers crossed. They're both in their clinical years at the moment. So sometimes it takes a little while for them to be able to actually get away from the clinical work and join us. But Ali is a student from the United States. So we have got people joining us from all around the world at the moment, which is fantastic because we've got a great sign up for this event. The way it's going to work is we've scheduled it for roughly 90 minutes. And the first part of that will be a presentation which Susanna will take the lead on. Following that, there's a video. Uh, for those that aren't aware, Masaryk University is the site of an amazing clinical simulation center, one of the biggest in Europe, if not the world actually, which is brand new. And they've got a lovely video to show you of that facility, which is unique really in most medical schools in Europe and around the world. And then we're going to have the chance to ask some questions, both to the academic team and to the students at uh, Masaryk University. Although I'm leading the presentation today and we help coordinate the applications to Masaryk, I don't really want to be doing much of the talking myself because it's really the specialists, both being the staff at the university and the students that really you all want to hear from. So without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Susanna from the university who's got a little webinar, a little uh, PowerPoint presentation for the webinar today uh, and will tell us all we need to know about the university, the Czech Republic, Brno and the application procedures to get a place to study medicine or dentistry or physiotherapy at Masaryk University. Susanna, over to you. Thank you. Um, I would like to welcome everybody who decided to join this webinar. And also I would like to thank Ben from Medical Doorway for organizing this event. So I will start with a short presentation so you know more about Brno, about the faculty and especially the admission process. So I will share my presentation. So one moment. So I hope everybody can see it now, yeah? We can. Yeah, great, perfect. Okay, so my name is Zuzana Palackova, as you know, and also uh, Helena Melicharova is here, here, who is the head of the international office. And we both are in charge of the admission process. And we are very happy that we can tell you something more about Brno, about our faculty, and hopefully convince you to come and become part of Masaryk University yourself. So let's start with Brno. Maybe some of you already visited Brno. If not, it's definitely worth to see. So it's the second largest city in Czech Republic. It's located in South Moravia region on the east part of Czech Republic. There are around 400,000 inhabitants. So it's really not that big as for example, Prague, but it's big enough to find here everything what you need. Yes, so I myself, I'm coming from Slovakia and I came here to for studies in 2007. And since then I'm here in Brno because I fell in love with the city. So Brno is really perfect place for students. As you can see, there are 65 types of students. There are more universities located in Brno. And when we compare it, for example, to Prague, Brno really is a student city, whereas Prague is more of a tourist city, but Prague is also beautiful. 
and you can visit it every weekend if you want to. It's a good connection, two and a half hours by train or by bus. So you can visit Prague, even though you will be in Brno. And Brno has a good connection to other cities in Europe. So like two away is Vienna, you have Budapest and or Bratislava, as I'm coming from Slovakia, so also Bratislava. So about the Faculty of Medicine, our students are lucky that they can study in a modern facilities that are located at the university campus Bohunice. You can see the great red entrance with the sign of Masaryk, Masarykova Universita, Masaryk University. So this is the campus where you will be studying if you decide to come to Brno. You can see also there this bridge. This bridge, it is actually connected to a shopping mall where you can find everything what you, what you need when you need to buy some groceries, there are banks and every important facilities that you as a student might need. Yeah, this campus uh, or the faculty itself is also connected to one of our teaching hospitals. The white building is the faculty hospital Brno, one of the biggest one in the Czech Republic. We have other four teaching hospitals around the city. So, but this one is directly connected to our faculty. You can also see there are nice uh, modern lecture halls. Nowadays, due to Corona situations, the lectures are online, but for future, definitely, they will be used again for the lectures. So, uh, as already Ben mentioned, we are very proud that we have a simulation center, an educational facility for practical instruction at our faculty. This simulation center is brand new. It was opened recently, last year in, Oct in October last year. So already this year's first year students are, uh, are using it on daily basis in their instructions. So the simulation center contains rooms with special simulation equipment used for dentistry. There are uh, operating room, intensive care unit, everything what you can think of is as part to, for medicine. Let me show you some more pictures so you can see some experience it more. So for example, our dentistry students, you can see all the, how they are working there on the phantoms. It's really modern and unique, and they are very satisfied <laughs> with this facility as we, this is the feedback what we received. And also you can see students of first year, because they, as a first year student, you would have here already your anatomy class and your first aid class. And you can see that there are students uh, learning from using an uh, anatomy digital table. And this is really a unique experience for them because it prepares them well, for example, for the dissections that then take place at the end of the first semester. So they are really well prepared as they told us that it helps them. Uh, but it's not only for the first year students that are using the simulation centers, but slowly also the higher years, what can be done here at the simulation center is being done here, as you can see, they're an operating room as well. It's, it's all just a simulation for students to try before they go and work with the real patients. So it's really something unique, something worth to experience. And at the end of this presentation, we will show you a short video where you can see it more. So there are more pictures from the simulation center, as you can see. And I would like just to make we have a short overview of the two programs that we offer in English language. It's general medicine for six years and dentistry for five years. So some of you already have applied either for general medicine or dentistry. Uh, all these programs are fully recognized in the EU and US, so globally. So this is something that I wanted to tell you. And now coming to the most important part and why are you here is how to be admitted if you decide to be part of our university. So there is one condition that every student that wants to study in Czech Republic ha has to fulfill and that is that he needs to finish his secondary school. And then he 
those who want to apply this year, all of them need to contact one of our partner agencies abroad. So here it would be the medical doorway. Due to Corona situation, we do not have an exam in Brno. Every applicant needs to apply via our partner. It's important to submit an electronic application via our website. So some of you have hopefully done it because I received a list of the applicants recently from Ben. So those of you who applied, you will have the entrance exam, I think ne next weekend. It will be online because we had to adapt to the situation with COVID-19 and already last year we started to offer the entrance examination in online form and we do it also this year as the uh, epidemic is, is still ongoing. Uh, the format of the tests is the same like it would be a, in a paper form, so there are three tests. You need to take the test from chemistry and biology. These are obligatory. Then the third test, you can choose whether you want to take physics or mathematics. So three tests and hopefully those who applied for the exam next weekend, you will receive an invitation with all the instructions how to access these tests on Monday. You should receive an email. Please also check your spam folder. It happens that these emails um, then fall, fall into the spam folder. So you will have instructions where to find these, the links to these tests. Uh, for one test, you have 60 minutes. And as said, you need to complete three tests and you will have three and a half hours to do it. So you can make a short break between them if needed. So each test contains 40 multiple choice questions. There is only one answer correct. There are no negative points. The only difference is with the mathematics, there are only 20 multiple choice questions. So how to prepare? So those of you um, who, prof because there will be also exams maybe in, later in May, end of May. So those of you still have time, for example, to use our e-learning preparatory courses that can be purchased on our website. And this, we offer it in biology, physics, and chemistry. You can also have a look at the sample test on our website so you know what to expect and see the format of the test. Yeah. So once you take the test, you, you've done the hard part, then you will be waiting for the results. So the results are now within five days. We sometimes make it faster, it depends, but within the five days, definitely you should know whether you are accepted or not. This decision will be vis visible directly in your application. So you will see the status of your application, either accepted or not accepted. You will also receive an official notification from the email, uh, from the system. Those who are admitted, I will prepare for them the admission documents, which are really important documents for you, as it contains all the information about the studies, about your enrollment, and also documents needed for visa. And there is also an invoice. And this is an important point to mention, the payment terms of the tuition fee. So. The deadline for payment of the tuition fee will be specified on the invoice. So really check it carefully. Do not miss the deadline for the payment. Uh, with this payment of the tuition fee within the deadline, you are securing your seat at our university. If you do not pay it on time, we take it as that you are not accepting this admission and we will cancel it. So really be careful and pay on time within the deadline stated on the invoice. I should. Maybe also mention that it's possible to pay separately for each semester. So you can pay for one semester within the deadline to secure your seat. If some of you are applying for a loan, and as it happens, if there are candidates from US or from the all around the world, we need to be informed about this before the deadline, of course, of the payment. So most of you will probably need to apply for visa to study for a long-term visa. We really recommend, highly recommend to apply as soon as possible. So as soon as you receive the admission document, apply for the visa because it can take up to 90 days till it is approved. The admission documents will be sent to the 
to medical doorway agencies, so they will distribute it then to you as quickly as possible. Also recently with COVID-19 situation, we found out that best is to order health insurance from the PVZP insurance company. So we recommend this one for those of you who are applying for visa and need to order some health insurance because it covers the expenses related to COVID-19. So next uh, things that are needed. So please, one important, another important thing is the verification of the foreign secondary school education. So you need to do two things. So your diploma can be verified by, by us, by the faculty. You need to pay an administrative fee of 750 Czech crowns. We will send the link for the payment to all the admitted students via emails. And uh, you need to prepare necessary documents. These documents, you have to bring them to the enrollment, latest at that an enrollment. We will send, uh, like, I would say part of the admission document, you will also receive instructions what to bring, what needs to be done for the verification, what documents we need. So please follow those instructions and get those documents ready for the enrollment. Otherwise, you cannot be enrolled to studies. This is something which is very important and become more strict nowadays. So all the students need to bring it. If you know that there is a delay, you need to inform us immediately during summer if you experience some issues with the documentation. Also, the first year students have the option to stay at the Masaryk University dormitories. This is not compulsory. It's up to you to decide whether you want to find a private accommodation, but still you have the option to stay at the dormitories and maybe you stay there for the first semester and then you find already some friends and you will find a private accommodation. It's it's possible it happens. So just for you to know that if you would like to have an accommodation at our dormitories, you need to make a reservation. These reservations are done in August and we will send the instructions via email as well as soon as we have them from our housing services. Yes, yeah, so don't worry, it's done in August, beginning of August. We recommend our students to book the rooms at Vinarska Halls of Residence, as is the closest one to the campus. And it's you can see the pictures. These are from the Vinarska Halls of Residence. So you can see it's really located on a nice place and it's closest to the campus. It takes about 15 minutes by a bus to go come to the campus. There are other dormitories and it can take up to 30 minutes, but mostly it's not longer than that to access the campus from our dormitories. So if you have done all those steps and you are ready to come to Brno, so what to expect when you come to Brno? Uh, for those who are interested, we offer an intensive Czech language course. It's a two week course prior the semester starts. So it's two weeks, each day covers five lessons for Czech from Czech language. We will send also more information later how to purchase it and and so uh, there will be also an important part, which is the orientation week, which is organized by our student association. And you will hear more about it later. So it's organized by MIMSA. And this orientation week will take place one week before the semester starts. And they have already now prepared interesting events for you, how to, to adapt to the city, to get to know people. Of course, it will be all adapted to the corona situation at that time. Uh, at the same week, the enrollment will take place from Monday to Thursday. All of you will receive an exact date in your admission documents. So you need to show up on that day specified in your documents. And then after you are enrolled, you experience this perfect orientation week. You are ready to start your tuition and you will start it on 13th of September. Yes, and that was the presentation from me. Um, maybe important thing to say is how to reach us. So those of you who already maybe applied or uh, know our website, 
or you can write us to admission at med.muni.cz. This is the email address that I will receive the emails and also Helena. So this is the best way to contact us via email, but we are also on Facebook or on Instagram. And as mentioned, I will, so I want to thank you for your attention. And now I would like to show you the video of the simulation center. So I will just switch. So I will be able to stop sharing now. And just quickly, I will switch to the video. So I hope you can see it. I will. And you hopefully you will also hear it right. Susanna, we can't hear the sound from the video. The sound I will need to we'll try to make it louder. Now It's Unfortunately with, not. It's something to do with the share screen uh, settings. Mm -hmm. What we'll do is while you try to look at that, uh, bear in mind I can I can try and share it from my side as well. Okay. Mm -hmm. If I try and share it from my side shortly as well, because I should be able to because I've got access to that video. What I'm going to okay. do first, however, is just talk to the people online because we had a couple of questions that came in during that before we hand over to speak to uh, Ali and to Dylan. The, a couple of questions that came in. One of the questions was regarding the documentation and, and the nostrification, okay, of that documentation. And um, this came in from Mark. Uh, and I said I'd explain it so everyone can understand exactly what uh, what we're saying, what, what this process involves. The process is not that difficult, okay? It's just a little bit bureaucratic. Uh, we have to basically legalize copies of your, in the case of British qualifications, the A-levels, uh, and that doesn't necessarily have to be the certificates initially. It can be a letter from a school with uh, results confirmed. It could also be a copy of your IB diploma or high school diploma issued from your IB school or effectively the US high school diploma transcript and certificate if you're coming from the United States or from a US system or the CBSE system in India. Depending on the country you come from, it will either need a document called an apostyle attached to it, or it will need to be also legalized by the Czech embassy or consulate if your country is not a member of what's called the apostyle convention. For those students who we work with, we actually explain all this in a lot of detail in individual emails anyway, so please don't get too concerned about it. That's what we're here to do. We're here to help ease your transition from applicant to medical school student at Masaryk University. So that process is relatively straightforward. In fact, we also send the documents even earlier through the mail, through DHL to Masaryk University to make it an easier process anyway. So one less thing to worry about when it comes to enrolling in September. Regarding visas, now one of the biggest takeaways from the presentation was apply for your visa early. Please do apply for your visa early. For British students, I am unhappy to confirm to you that we now do need visas to study in the Czech Republic when for years that we didn't need them, but we now do because we're not members of the European Union. The good news is for you Brits out there, I've actually already smoothed the process through with the Czech Embassy in London, and we've even got some fast track methods to get appointments for the embassy in London if you have a British passport uh, outside of the normal procedures. And that's th thankfully something which the Czech embassy have been fantastic with establishing in London. However, regardless of where you are in the world, if you do not hold a European Union citizenship, you need to apply for a visa. In addition to documents from the university, you also need some documents from your home country that are, are aligned to your country of residence and or your country of nationality. One of the biggest things you will need is a no criminal convictions report because this is a mandatory requirement by the Czech Embassy and that is the one document in this process which can take time to get issued, time to get legalised, and which also needs to be translated into Czech language. 
that's why the process can take 90 days because even getting the paperwork together can take some time. We do advise students for certain exams to make sure they've got some of that paperwork ready even before they've actually sat the entrance exam to ensure that when they do get their offer, they can just put their foot to the accelerator on applying for the student visa. With the enrollment being at the beginning of September, you know, 6th to the 9th of September, time is really uh, of, of, great, of great importance when it comes to applying for the visa. So that's one thing which, especially for British students who perhaps not even thought about applying for visas for Europe before, that's the new reality we're in. And it's what we just have to do if we're going to get you from where you are today into medical school in Masaryk University. There's one benefit actually about having that visa uh, compared to about studying in other parts of the world and that is the Czech Republic is part of the Schengen zone. Now for those students that are joining us from around the world who perhaps not don't know what the Schengen zone is, it's a bit like if you fly to the United States. You might fly into New York and you will clear immigration in New York at JFK or Newark if you're unlucky and then you would then uh, travel on to another destination in the US as an internal as domestic flight. That's something which is the same in Europe. So let's say, for example, you fly into Prague from Hong Kong or from Beijing via Frankfurt, you would actually clear immigration in Frankfurt. And then when you arrive in the Czech Republic, it's a domestic flight. That's how the process then works. So when you're studying in the Czech Republic for those six years, that means that in theory, if you've got a weekend off or a week off in your vacation periods, you could pick your backpack on and walk all the way from Prague to Lisbon without anyone checking your passport as you cross through the borders. I wouldn't recommend doing that journey on foot. There are much cheap, there are very cheap and quick ways to do it across Europe. But it just goes to show that if you're a student from a country that would usually require you to have a tourist visa to visit the Czech Republic or any European country, this is a great opportunity as well as studying medicine or dentistry to see a lot of Europe because they're things that you will have, experiences you will have that are going to be something which you will have for the rest of your lives. And that's one of the biggest, I think, one of the biggest attractions of studying, especially at Masaryk University, because just south, about one hour, 20 minute train ride away, you've got the wonderful Austrian capital of Vienna as well. So for those of you that want to go and see the Vienna Christmas markets in November, December, under normal circumstances that can be done at a weekend, even as a day trip as well. Uh, so those are some of the kind of things as well that I wanted to kind of draw attention to at this point. What I'm gonna do now before we uh, hand over to Dylan and I'll get that video working for you guys as well, is that uh, we do have the Q&A feature. We have got people on YouTube, we've got people on Facebook, but we do have the Q&A feature active as well. And we do have the chat feature active. If you've got any questions at all, and we have a fair number of people on these different forums, any questions whatsoever to ask to myself, Dylan uh, or Ali, both Dylan's a student from the UK, Ali from the US, if you've uh, missed the beginning of the presentation, uh, you've got plenty of time to ask them questions. What I'm going to do short now really is hand over, if that's okay with you, Susanna and Helena, is hand over to uh, Dylan to talk a little bit about his experience of going through the application and exam and the first few years of studying medicine as a British medical student and Ali, at some point I'll hand over to you next and talking about your plans about perhaps transitioning back to the US and seeking residency in the US and the US MLE process because there's some things which not just British students or, or, or American students I should say are, are interested in, students from around the world are interested in taking the US MLE because it does open a lot of pathways. Exactly. So, perfect. Okay. Perfect. What I'll do, Dylan, if I hand over to you first, and I'm going to get this video working for the team, then I'll, uh, and then we'll we'll speak to Ali, and then we'll get that video on. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Um, so first of all, thanks for for having me, and, and thank you to to everyone who's who's here today. Uh, and if you have any questions at all, just drop them in the Q and A box or chat box below, and we'll try and answer them um, accordingly. Um, so yeah, as as Ben introduced, I'm a, a, a med student, fourth year med student from from the UK, from London. And um, yeah, I'm currently here in, in Berno um, and I'm joined by Ali here, who's a friend and we've both uh, known each other for a while and we've both worked in MIMSA, the organization which, um, which you guys saw br uh, briefly earlier. So um, yeah, we, we, we've answered a lot of these kind of questions before about sort of transitioning and, and coping and sort of uh, work-life balance and all sorts. So I'm, I'm really happy to be here uh, to talk to you guys. So from, from my uh, personal experiences, I think, um, you know, I came from um straight from from school really and um 
you know, transitioned straight into the system here, did my entrance exam, and then in, in July, and then and I and I started studying, uh, started here in, in September. So pretty much straight after school, I joined. Um, and uh, in terms of the entrance exam, first of all, I thought it was, um, thought it was, uh, I didn't think it was too challenging. I think, you know, sort of A-levels prep, prepped uh, me quite well um, for what was needed to, to pass those exams. So not, not really a concern in terms of um, uh, transitioning. However, I think it's a big, big step really moving anywhere, moving to a whole new country. So um, I think my advice would be just prep early um, and make sure you pack all the things you need and, um, you know, get all your documentation, especially now post Brexit, make sure you get all your documentation in order. Um, as as um, Susanna and Helena and, and Ben have mentioned, and, and I'm sure will mention to you. So, um, yeah, really, in terms of, just in terms of the admin stuff, just make sure you're prepared. Uh, in terms of the first year, I think um, you know it's a pretty big step up from from school as as we know it. I went to um, I went to a grammar school, so if anyone here is from grammar school or public schools, it's pretty similar. You'll have pretty similar we'll have pretty similar experiences. So, um, it's a pretty big step up uh, in terms of the subjects that you guys will encounter. You'll encounter biology, biophysics. Uh, anatomy and then histology and some other smaller subjects as well so um, they're I wouldn't say you know incredibly challenging subjects but I think the most challenging thing in first year and I'm sure Ali can add to this as well is, is pretty much time management you need to you need to learn how to uh, juggle everything and you need to learn pretty pretty fast as well there's not it's a pretty steep learning curve so um, uh, but I guess the, the one positive is that you know we've we've all been through it it's all possible um, and um, there's a lot of support here um, and I think the support has only grown from year to year. So there's, there's definitely a good support system here. And you guys, when you start, uh, if you guys decide to choose Masaryk University, you guys will join in September and you'll have a, a Freshers' Week led by a really fantastic team at the moment from, from MIMSA, um, who's the student organization. So um, really, really uh, crucial for you guys. And, and the, most of the work that the MIMSA does is, is pretty much for first year students. So um, if you guys haven't heard of MIMSA, just you know, feel free to check them out, mimsa.org. Um, look them up on Instagram, Facebook, you'll find all the stuff they do um, and get in touch with them if you have any questions at all as well um, about you know, connecting with students. And of course you can contact me as well um, if you have any specific questions or doubts, whatever. Um, but yeah, so that's really my kind of overview of, of transitioning. I thought I thought it was quite tough, um, but um, you learn things, you pick things up pretty fast, and like I said, the student support is pretty pretty good. Um, and um, yeah, uh, um, unless there's any other questions, Elon, can you just yeah. tell us a little, tell the students a bit more about uh, the structure, especially of the first year? Yeah, what sure. I think students really need to be aware of is a little bit about how the assessment system works at the university, because I think this is something which catches some students off guard because it does give students, it treats students like adults and it gives them a lot more ownership of the learning and the assessment strategy, which is perhaps different than what they've experienced at school or even if they've gone to say a university in the UK where it's a lot more prescribed and a lot more spoon fed. So if you can give us a little bit of a, an explanation of how that system works, that'd be really appreciated. Yeah, I'm glad you alluded to that because because I think spoon fed is, is, is a good word to use. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, like I said, it's a steep learning curve. You're pretty much told you know here's the material you need to learn and, and here is your exam date uh, go and do it basically so there's as many ways you can study but essentially the way that the way the first year works is that you'll have uh, you'll have lectures on a weekly basis for all of these subjects it's a pretty packed timetable you know you'll have long days some days you'll start really early in the morning some days you'll finish late and you'll have tests continuous progress tests throughout the semester so uh, they're called sort of partial tests control tests for example in in czech which you'll study for four years You'll have tests pretty much every other week, every three weeks, there'll be a progress test. Um, things like Latin, biology, you'll have two tests in the semester. So one at the halfway point, one at the end. Um, anatomy now has some, has some more tests. So there's always uh, you know, continual hurdles um, and there's a lot of studying to do basically from, you know, from, from right from the beginning um, to, to keep your kind of knowledge up to date. Okay. And then how about that transition from so the way that the curriculum works in the Czech Republic is and that's Masaryk University is what we call traditional medical curriculum. Yeah. So for those that are not aware of what a traditional medical curriculum is, the first two years are what we call preclinical sciences, where you will learn about the normal, you will learn about normal anatomy, normal biophysics, normal biochemistry. And then when you get to your third year, you start to learn about the abnormal. So what happens to the lungs? You've learned about the normal lungs in say years one and two. And then when you get to year three, you start to apply pathology where you start to look at what happens if the lungs have some chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or even a tumor or something dramatic like that. 
Just explain then how that transition is into, and you'll see where I'm going in a moment, Dylan. How about that transition into the clinical education, the hospital uh, environment? How do you find that transition from learning about, say, preclinical into clinical sciences? Yeah, I think it's a it's a good question, and it's um, I think the system here is it's maybe a little bit difficult to understand from the, right from the beginning. But as you move through the system, you start to appreciate the 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 platform, the kind of system we have here. It's a prerequisite system. So essentially, like you said we learn everything we learn in first year is a foundation for the second year and then it's the same for every year 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 so um you know the preclinical knowledge that we learn in the first two or three years in in the lecture room is applied in the clinic so in fourth and fifth years we have rotations or blocks so you go through each department so like ophthalmology radiology for example and you're talking to patients and you're applying the knowledge that you've learned in the previous years in pathology physiology for example um, when it comes to cases and when it comes to talking to doctors and patients, for example. So it's, it's all about applying the knowledge you've learned um, from the lecture room. Perfect. Ali, is it okay if I move on to you for a moment? I'm going to give Dean. Yeah, of course, of course, go for it. Ali, I just want to check because Masaryk University is one of very few faculties in uh, Europe, actually, which is approved for U.S., federal mm -hmm. funding are you currently accessing the u.s federal loan scheme to actually uh, yes sir yeah that? so that was that was actually one of the you know one of the main reasons i chose to come here you know because i had gotten accepted into lots of uh, american institutions for pre-medical programs and when i started looking to europe i kind of wanted uh an institution that had somewhat of a bridge to the to the american system whether that was financially or academically and in this case the uh you know the fafsa loan program is uh, we're allowed to we're allowed to take part in it, and I think that's an amazing feature. Mm. Unfortunately, British students, I do have to say that the UK student finance scheme does not provide funding if you decide to study outside of the UK. The UK hasn't kind of become that progressive, really, in its educational philosophy compared to the US or Germany or the Netherlands or Norway, which do provide access to funding. Ali, what year are you in now in your education? So I'm currently in my fifth year. Fifth year. So you've already started going through the steps for USNLE. Yes, sir. So uh, right as of right now, I still have yet to take step one. So I'm planning on taking that this summer. Mm -hmm. But definitely, you know, I've started looking at all the resources. I actually started around the end of fourth year, I'd say, or in the middle of my fourth year is kind of when I started getting my books together, my sources, tried to, you know, look at the content from a different perspective, because obviously, you know, Masaryk is uh, mainly an oral exam based uh, mm -hmm. university, whereas uh, USMLE step one and two now are in their mm -hmm. entirety multiple choice questions, mm -hmm. you know, so obviously there's somewhat of a perspective change. And as long as that's something that you can prepare for and uh, take head on, then it's definitely, a, you know, a, a good uh, routine. Yeah, one of the things, one of the reasons Masaryk University is on the FAFSA loan scheme for US students is because of its very high USMLE passing rates. In fact, Masaryk University even um, if students clear step one, well, actually, I'm aware, I think Kalina can confirm this, but I believe they refund you the, the cost of taking exactly. the exam, yeah. which yep. is a great incentive, mm -hmm. not just for American students, but for anyone who wants to take the USMLE steps, because they do open the doorway to more than just the United States as well, which is a, a, useful, a useful thing to have, really. And it's a very well-established medical licensing uh, assessment system. In fact, the UK is bringing in something similar from 2024, the current data is called the medical licensing assessment, which will form two exams. One of them it will be uh, one of them will be theoretical and the other one will be practical. All right, we've got, we've got a couple of questions that are being asked now and I'll answer them. The good news is I've got that video working now as well. So I'll share that shortly and then we're gonna come back to the students again. Uh, to talk a little bit about, about uh, their other experiences, perhaps outside of the classroom. Someone's asked about uh, uh, the impact of corona on the classroom. In fact, the university did move to online learning for the theoretical uh, work. And as they were able to kind of get on top of the, the, uh, the practical side of things, I think what the situation now is, is that a lot of the theory is still taking place online with students kind of in their study groups taking place in practical lessons. Yeah, and that's something which is not just being the case in the Czech Republic or Masaryk, it's actually been the case in most health related programs across uh, the UK, Europe, uh, further afield as well. Yeah. With lots of regular lateral flow testing, et cetera, but things have been brought back together and at the, at the, at the initial stage of the outbreak, the Czech Republic had a very low infection rate, which increased in the second wave, obviously, like in most countries, but that's something which has been managed particularly well by the universities 
and the med schools. I would expect med schools to actually manage that kind of situation better than most yeah. of them. Can I, can I just add something to that question? Go ahead, uh, Dima. Okay, yeah. So I just wanted to just add, actually, uh, the anatomy department, which is probably the, one of the most important departments uh, at our faculty and the most uh, subject, the most important subject you guys will do in first year, uh, they handle things really well. And, you know, they divided up groups, you know, into, into smaller class sizes. You have dissection courses. And even, you know, throughout the pandemic, um, the dissections actually, you know, continued and they, they managed everything really well. So, um, and that's a subject where, you, you know, you need to be uh, interacting. You can't do things just online. So um, lectures were online, uh, but the practical elements and the practical sort of teaching was still maintained um, and still is, is being maintained. What we'll do before we move on, because I do want to talk to the students and the um, colleagues from the university about some things outside the classroom, because studying medicine for six years is not just about uh, being in a classroom. There's also living for the six years as well. But I do I want to bring the video up and with any with all uh, with best of uh, luck, this should now work, guys. So I'm going to share my screen and fingers crossed this will work for everyone. So you should all see the video now. And please do let me know if the sound plays as well. It should do. Do we have sound? Stop. Let's do it again. Maybe you think you can just wait for the experience. That all you have to do is listen, take some advice, and watch carefully. You believe that all pieces of the puzzle always somehow fit in anyway. Let's be honest. Experience doesn't come by itself. It comes with trials and errors. Start the operation, intubate the patient. A woman born in 1946. Experience is born from the moments which make you hit the bottom. Things go faster. 30 minutes left. There's another patient. And also from the moments when you bounce off the bottom. Because you just don't give up. You keep going. Because here you can try everything in practice. And find friendship where you don't expect it. And when the moment comes, it froze. <laughs> moment when you must trust yourself. You will not fail. Okay, I believe, did the video freeze then? Yeah, I think we're obviously just dealing with some bandwidth issues, but uh, give me one moment. Okay, we're back online now, yeah? What I'll do is... Uh, You all hear me? Okay. I don't know why the video froze then. Sorry about that, guys. I think we're just dealing with bandwidth issues because we're dealing with a lot of uh, files and a lot of people signed on. What I would say is that video is available on our YouTube channel as well. So uh, do take a look uh, there if you want to see that video or the university in any more detail. Okay. So we have a couple of more questions coming in and I'm going to hand over. Okay. Um, and one of the questions is exactly what, uh, one of the questions I wanted to ask actually, that's fantastic. Someone's asked about what about the interactions with the wider expat community in Brno? And I want to expand, expand that. I'd like to talk also about how you guys uh, get on with the, you know, even the local students, the, uh, the domestic students, the Czech students who are there. 
and someone said about the presence of uh, something on Asian students. Okay, so I know Dylan and Ali, obviously you come from, uh, although you're British and American, you do come from a South Asian uh, background. Could you talk a little bit about, the Czech Republic is a very liberal country, obviously, it's a highly liberal country, and liberal thinking has been something which the Czech Republic has been famous for. Tell me a little bit about your, you know, your experience as being a student, say, of colour, of, 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 of a student from the ethnic minority in, in the Czech Republic. Um, Ali, you go on, you go first. Okay, so, you know, I went to, I went to high school in the United Arab Emirates, right, and so I, I'm very experienced with what an international community kind of looks like, seeing as my family was, like, part of the expat community for the last five years, even before I came to Masaryk University, you know, so with that being said, I can, I can confidently say that, Bruno, you never kind of feel out of place, you know, I'm sure Dylan can agree to this, uh, and add on to this, you're constantly surrounded by uh, people from all different nationalities and, and different ethnicities. So, you know, it's it's kind of, it hasn't really even crossed my mind to be out of place uh, in a city like Brno A, because it's literally packed with students. Uh, I'm not sure about the exact statistics, but, uh, you know, one of the, like the majority of people here are actually students. And on top of that, there's so many expats here because of the sprouting companies and businesses here. So uh, definitely like the international experience um, is very prominent and I'm sure Dylan can agree to that. So, have you got any to add there as a, as, a, as a British student coming from an Asian background, yeah? Yeah, I would, I would echo the same sentiment really. I think, you know, when I first joined, um, it, it, well, I think any any student would say the same thing. It's easy to feel a bit out of place, and um, just because it's a completely unfamiliar, you know, environment, it's a new language, new currency, all these little things. Um, and I think I came with my parents, and as soon as they left, you know, I was I was left alone here, and you kind of just, you know, you're in a whole new environment. So it's it's a bit daunting. And I think um, the outside of the classroom environment it can feel a bit daunting. My, I would say, you know, I, my my experience is obviously an individual, and I think everyone has their own individual experiences. I would say that for the most part, the, the locals are, are friendly and you do feel you know, comfortable and you do feel at home. Um, sometimes I think the stereotype is that Czechs, and this is, just not, this is not just for Berno, but you know, generally for the Czech Republic, they can come across a little bit cold. And I think uh, from, coming from the UK, you know, everyone is kind of polite and says, cheers, thanks, you know, you know just, just generally, I think it's just the uh, it's mannerisms which come from the UK. You don't always tend to find those things. Yet. So don't always you know, expect that people will be friendly and be yeah, smart. That's and not a negative thing, is it, Dylan? Because that's how yeah, that's yeah. the local culture, you know, yeah, they're, just not like that. They wouldn't, they're not like that with you because you're from outside of the Czech Republic. No, no, no. no yeah. Interactions yeah. are done. Yeah. It's normal. Yeah. yeah. And just to add to that, I think if you, you know, if you make an effort, if you, you know, try and, you know, speak the language, if you're going to the shops and so on, if you, you know, just try and talk as much as you can in Czech, which you will learn, um, you know, people value that. And if you make the effort, I think it goes a long way. So yeah, I would say it's no real problem, no real problem with uh, fitting in. Ahmed's asked a question, I know I was one of our, our applicants, about the medical licensing exam in the UK. The GMC is still working on that. At the moment, the default position, which I can answer really, is the GMC has wanted for a long time to assess the knowledge and skills of everyone who wants to work as a doctor in the UK. And that's going to be something which, as, they, as the GMC moves forward, will look to do. And it's act, the MLA is going to be applied even to those graduating from UK universities as well. So I think it's fair to assume that that will be implemented for graduates who come from any medical school, whether that be from the UK or outside of the UK. And someone said, can you remind on the first year intake into English course medicine versus can you remind rem, remind on the first year intake into English course in versus Czech language? I'm assuming there are two programs. Obviously, the international program for students is taught in English, and the Czech program is for the local students, and they're parallels. They're identical in every single way, apart from the language they're taught in. Dylan, I was going to ask this question. Perhaps Dylan and Ali will be able to discuss this uh, together as well. Is how have you you do have lessons on how to speak Czech? on the first three, I think the first three years, you will have that, I think the first, or first four is it, did you say? Okay, fantastic. How have you found that experience of learning Czech as you've gone through your course? Dylan, do you want to start with that one? Um, 
it's tricky i'll be honest with you it's tricky um i think learning any language i think czech is is it's not um it doesn't have latin roots so it's not similar to you know english french spanish uh you know, all the kind of languages which we generally types you know learn in at school in the uk so it is difficult um but the teaching here i would say is fantastic the czech department you know do a really great job with with helping and assisting and, and mentoring so they do a really good job i think it's 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 difficult because you have to juggle that with your medical studies um and it's a czech is, is you know as a language any other any other language you have to practice it regularly um and it's a it can be a bit time consuming but i think you know everyone everyone has to do it so i think if you just sort of dedicate a bit of time every week and it's, it's it is manageable um yeah, yeah, I, I completely agree. Um, you know, Masaryk, uh, I think compared to other Czech universities, it's safe to assume that they emphasize Czech more than, than the other ones. At least that's, you know, from my knowledge, that's what I know. And I think one of the main reasons they do that is because when you get to your clinical years, right, when you get to year four, five, six, although when you're in first year, you know, you being in a classroom where you're learning a new language is the last thing you want to do because you just entered medical school, you're really excited. But when you get to fourth year, those skills uh, that you got from learning Czech, they really show. And the people that didn't put as much effort into the language, you can tell, you can come, like really differentiate the pe uh, those people from mm -hmm. the ones that, you know, put the time in, in the first four years of Czech uh, and are now able to carry, you know, sometimes fluent, not me, not me, but you know, a lot of a lot of my colleagues are able to have fluent conversations with uh, patients in the hospitals now, and you know, I think it's re it's really imperative to have that communication skill set because if you if you don't, then you uh, you kind of really struggle with your physical examination and your history taking. So yeah, def definitely, I agree with Dylan that it can be difficult and quite frustrating at times. You know, like. I remember there would be times in second year when I had a physiology test, a histology test. And on top of that, I had a, a test in Czech, you know, and just trying to juggle all that can be tough, but I, I definitely agree that it pays off uh, in the future. I would say, I would say if I can, uh, I would say there are like a two steps. Uh, for, the, for the freshers, I would really recommend to book the Czech language intensive course because those two weeks, will help you and give you advantage for the first year of studying Czech language. Trust me, it's very intensive and helps you. And the second thing is what the guys told. If you skip on the Czech language knowledge, uh, you will see that you will be missing this, uh, this information while, while you're gonna be in the clinics. Because you know, to be being a good doctor, you have to know how to take uh, the patient's history, the anamnesis, you know, in order you can make it. So. Uh, don't be afraid of the Czech language. All tuition is made by the English language, you know, especially now when the simulation center is open, you will be more probably working and training on the, on the phantoms and simulators. But anyway, the, the medicine is about to working and talking to the living people, to the patient. And unfortunately, who is the patient? All the people. And unfortunately, they do not know the English language. Yeah, so you have to be able to ask them what you are suffering from. Yeah, and to recognize that he's take he's saying, okay, I have a very easily I have a headache or or stomachache. Yeah, <laughs> so but don't be afraid of this. Okay, <laughs> Halid, I want to ask you specifically. I know you've just come in there, but because. Uh, we've just gone on and talked about clinical. Can you talk us a little bit about the clinical links that Masaryk University has both locally, but also internationally as well? Because I know you do have some very well-established students with hospitals in the UK where many graduates have gone on to work. Oh, yes, yes, you are right. Uh, I think the guys also can confirm me. Uh, the, you know, we have like a third year, as uh, Ben mentioned, is halfly theoretical, and uh, partially already uh, students are uh, in, a, in a hospitals for the internal medicine and surgery. And from the fourth, fifth and sixth years, mainly let's say 80%, 90% uh, until now they were in a clinics or 100%. But there are several options how to, uh, how to be skilled and how to know the system in your home countries. Mm. Uh, within the Erasmus program uh, in the fourth and fifth year, 
you can also use the opportunity to spend the uh, semester or a year in another in another country. Like uh, if you know the language, Germany, Norway, uh, Portugal, Spain. For uh, the last six years, all of the students can uh, spend the internships in your home countries. You can make a deal in uh, hospitals in your home country, or we will help you to make a contract. Uh, and uh, and uh, you can do the pre-graduation practice, which uh, we call that's the last year internships uh, in your home country. And especially this deal we have uh, in the UK as the only only medical faculty in Czech Republic, we have a deals. Uh, for example, with uh, Liverpool St. Helen hospitals, mm -hmm. when uh, our students are going to make these trainings. And also this hospital, uh, they, the, the better or the best students or, and also of course those students who want, uh, they can get an offer of the job, jobs um, mm -hmm. uh, in this hospital. Usually they have a, they have a, they have interviews with the students and already many of our students, not only UK nationalities, also Czechs and other nationalities, they have the jobs for the foundation one year in, mm. uh, in Liverpool sentence. Yeah, I know it's actually, it's Knowsley NHS Trust. I know because I actually was born there uh, many, many years ago. Uh, yeah. but, uh, but actually they actually come in, they interview the students actually also in the university around, around about March time, usually before the uh, It will be, it will be next week actually. <laughs> yeah, because of the but, Online. Uh, yeah. So there is a great opportunity there to actually have a more seamless transition to work. I think one thing to say for any student who wants to come and work in the UK after graduation, if they're not British or Irish, the doors are still open to you. You can still come and work in the UK. You can still apply for jobs here. We have a new visa called the NHS, or the, sorry, the Healthcare Workers Visa, which is a fast track visa if you get a job and you're non-British or Irish in the UK. So although Britain has left the EU, there are still fairly quick and established pathways to uh, both GMC registration and also to employment in the United Kingdom. Okay, we have another question. It says, are there similar international collaborations for dentistry to Helena or Susanna? Can you tell us a little bit more about the dental collaborations that you have? Okay, so dental collaboration, uh, because um, the dentistry lasts only five years. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, pre-graduation practices, internships, are only one semester, not the, the whole year, like for the general medicine. And these internships, uh, our teachers want to do it in Brno under, under our supervision. Mm -hmm. But the previous uh, years, third, fourth, and a half of the fifth year, students can spend uh, within the Erasmus exchange programs. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it shouldn't be a problem. The only problem is that, you know, dentistry is more specified and unique, and it's not easy to, to find the, the proper partner with a similar program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. please, I have to mention one thing. I hope that people will not be afraid, but you should realize that dentistry, it's not easier than general medicine. Mm -hmm. I would say it's quite opposite, yeah. Mm, yeah. But currently, we will um, in uh, May we are planning to finish our new video uh, uh, only about the about the dentistry program. So stay tuned, and you can see the new facility in a simulation center uh, about the for the for the dentistry. Mm. Yeah. Dylan, Ali, can you tell us a little bit more? We've talked so much about the program, studying, and what you're doing afterwards. Come on, you can't live for six years in one place and not have a life. Tell us a little bit more about what, what kind of makes you tick outside of the classroom, really, because everyone wants to, they, a lot of the students online want to know that when the parents might want to know about the studies. So what, how about you guys? What do you kind of, you know, how, how, do you, how do you kind of let the brain rest and the body rest in between the really intense studies that you have over the five or six years? You can start, Dylan, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I have to cast my mind back to 2019 before it was okay to go out uh, without a mask. But um, yeah, I think the first thing I would say is is, is travel. Like, you know, it's such a privilege to be in this part of Europe because it's so easy and so convenient to travel to neighboring cities. As, as Susanna mentioned in the, in the presentation, you know, it's so close to Vienna, Bratislava, Budapest. Um, and I think, yeah, I think tra traveling is, is such a great thing to do. Um, make, take your mind off things. 
um, in terms of, you know, there's pretty much, you can do anything here. You can do, if you're into certain sports, there's football teams you can join. Uh, ice hockey is really big here if you're keen on ice hockey. Um, loads of walks, loads of, you know, um, tourist, uh, I guess, touristy things we can, we can do whilst here. Um, during the Christmas time, I think it's really pretty. You know, the Christmas markets are up um, and, and it's really a big thing here. And in fact, on the subject of markets, markets uh, happen all the time here. So it's such a, it's such a, it's like Czech culture really. So um, I think, yeah. Um, yeah. In terms of other hobbies and things, you know, they like MIMSA kind of organize a lot of extracurricular things and they support students with uh, these kinds of activities, fun things to do really. Um, so there's really no limit on what we can do. Um, yeah. Maybe if you could, uh, please, if you could describe the bi a bit of more activities from the MIMSA, because uh, Dylan, uh, Dylan was until last year was a president of the MIMSA. So it would be fine if you if you describe it, what the MIMSA is doing for students. Yeah, yeah thank yeah. you. Yeah, and I, I was yeah I was the president, and, and Ali actually was vice president. So we we worked together for for an entire year. So um, yeah, so um, obviously through COVID, but uh, in terms of what MIMSA does. Um, we did barbecues, we did football tournaments, um, we did charity, a lot of charity work, bake sales and and charity events running, like basically running a week, like the last lasting a whole week. At the moment, MIMSA is doing a charity week. Um, gosh, what else did we do? Uh, Dylan, I, know, I think what I understand rightly, MIMSA also for the, get the senior students paired up with the younger students in years yeah. one and two to assist them with the modules that students tend to find that are particularly heavy going, like biophysics yeah. and anatomy. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about how you yeah. as senior students support those students who are coming through where you were, say three or four years ago. Yeah, exactly. So this is actually something which which we implemented when when we were in leading MIMSA. So, we, you know, there's a, we, we saw a kind of uh, an opportunity to, to mentor the students and try to help them out really um, from the pre-med stage. So, you know, after the entrance exam, you'll, you're a new medical student here, you're kind of lost. So um, MIMSA as an organization is there to help out, but it's, it's a nice to have sort of a personal touch. So we paired uh, every single, we pair every single incoming student, medical or dental with uh, an, a senior medical or dental student, just someone you can talk to, you know, you can confide in, you can talk to them about any problems or issues or anything, anything you really want to at all. And they're, they're, everyone is happy to help. So um, yeah, it doesn't have to be student, uh, it doesn't have to be um, education related, academic related, it could be anything. Um, and these students are here to just help point you in the right direction. You know, they might say either, okay, talk to MIMSA or talk to the study office or, or talk to specific departments, um, just there to kind of connect everyone. Brilliant, brilliant. Ali, do you want to add anything to that from your role as vice president? And, and generally what you do outside of, of you know, <laughs> being a fifth year medical student, because pretty soon you're not going to have a life when you start US residency. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I think for, for for someone like me, it's pretty bad timing with COVID, seeing as, you know, my fourth and now fifth year have mostly been in quarantine. Not full, not full, obviously locked in, but with, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of restrictions in place and reasonably so, you know, I completely understandable. But prior to that, you know, I think a lot of people have, I, or I think most of the external world has this misconception that, you know, in medical school, you are tied down to your desk and you're expected to study for 12 to 14 hours a day. And I'm not going to lie, you know, part of that is uh, I, I, can I can definitely vouch for that. And I'm sure Dylan can as well. You know, for the first two years, most of my time was, you know, spent in the library. But that's not to say that there weren't days or even weeks in the beginning of the semester where it literally it was all about socializing mm -hmm. uh you know as part of MIMSA we set up these fresher the well the, it's an orientation week we call it freshers week you know there's lots of names for it but it's basically that the first you know seven to ten days where we kind of let you know that yeah okay you're about to start this brutal uh, and rigorous medical program but you know you can still have a lot of fun while you do it so you know for for me I'd say that those and and I'm talking about when I wasn't in MIMSA, when they were doing these kind of events, it was such a good way to let off steam, you know? And then obviously when everyone else was back into the library, I got the signal that, okay, I think it's time to, you know, settle down and, you know, start hitting the books. And I think it's a great way to A, stay in touch with the community and B, also keep your priorities straight, you know, because if you're 
out there partying all the time, you know, I'm sure some people can handle it, but a lot of times it can be quite overwhelming and you know it's hard to balance your your medical program with us so that's what one thing i really like uh about MIMSA that they do and i'm sure anyone that comes here will you know share that sentiment uh down the road but yeah i mean Brno is you know there's tons of parks here and uh, on the weekends they're packed with people even you know even nowadays uh with with covid kind of going downhill a bit you know you can see people coming out of their homes again, you know, st- standing outside just in the center or in these parks and just hanging out. And I think, you know, medical students are no exception to that. We, we, we socialize whenever we can. And um, yeah, there's this hiking trails, uh, you know, physical, physical fitness is definitely something that I personally use to let off steam. And I'm sure a lot of people can, can relate to that. Mm-hmm. And um, actually over the summer I was uh, invited by the university to kind of film this video about Brno uh, it, and I'm sure you can find it on it's on YouTube it's called the study in Brno uh, and you know I think the hard part about coming here was that there was there wasn't much uh, content like that you know and you know you looked up pictures of Brno and you could find maybe five to ten that looked very similar but it was it was there was nothing that you could kind of you know get a get a very good overview of the city so i think especially now with these kind of new programs and these new organizations coming to fruition uh, new students have more knowledge than ever about the city recreational activities and then of course the the academic side of it so definitely yeah I'm going to ask people now if they've got questions. There are a couple more questions that I'm going to read out now. But if you've got any more questions at the moment, anyone online, because we are just going over the hour and we don't want to kind of carry, keep you too late at night because uh, depending on where you are in the world, it could be either mid-afternoon or, or late in the evening uh, if you're in Asia or uh, middle lunchtime if you're on the east coast of the US or morning if you're on the west coast. Uh, so any questions, get them into the Q&A feature now. Uh, can I give them, people a chance to read them out? Uh, uh, right. Oh, by the way, the video of the simulation center, like I said, you can find it on the YouTube channel. And when it goes onto this recording, will be edited in as well, because I know we did freeze there. So I'll make sure that full video does play when we re- repeat this webinar uh, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. Someone said, have you, do you get regular tests at the moment uh, in your, for your practical classes? What's going on at the moment regarding testing? Uh, so right now, personally, um... So okay, so for really example, COVID testing here, by the way. Yeah, yeah COVID. Yeah, yeah. COVID. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so right now they don't. Pro- they don't like my clinical box don't directly provide COVID tests. But for example, when you are in a very, I guess, vulnerable uh, part of the hospital. For example, I have an, uh, uh, a module called infectious disease next week, and obviously for that you need to you know take the the appropriate precautions and because of that they're providing COVID tests for us prior to even entering the hospital so Mm. you know I I, I honestly can't say that it's for every single uh, clinical bug but definitely for some and for the important ones they do provide the the testing. And I've had my first vaccination someone's asked how are we doing vaccination wise in the Czech Republic? Well actually this is the this is a bit painful because you probably know that uh, there is a lack of the vaccine in the in the European Union generally. So in this moment, vaccinated were in the January from uh, were vaccinated doctors and nurses and uh, medical staff. Then uh, were vaccinated students uh, who helped uh, who helped in the hospitals who mm-hmm. worked actually because you maybe do not know but um, according to the Czech law, uh, the prime minister ordered to Czech students uh, of the fourth and fifth year uh, to work in a hospital to help the system. So those students were vaccinated. A couple of our international uh, students as well who's, who were, uh, who uh, went to work and helped in a hospital as well. The issue, you know, as we mentioned, the issue was the Czech language. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I know that many of the international students wanted to help. But without the without the knowing the Czech language, you know, uh, it would be a problem. Mm. So unfortunately, the younger the dean wanted, 
but we do not have enough vaccine, even though for the elderly people, I'm 50, I wasn't vaccinated as well. <laughs> so unfortunately, the students have to wait. Once we will have enough vaccine, the dean has got the promise that all of the students, including international, uh, will be provided by, by the vaccine. Mm. And unfortunately, in this time, yeah. it's impossible. Mm. We're all hoping by September that as vaccines roll out across the world, that you know we're going to be moving back to the normal, and then people will have the normal student experience that they would expect. Uh, maybe not in exactly the same way for another twelve months, mm. but we're moving towards that way. Uh, Kajiha, who I know uh, is an applicant as well, has asked at the students to talk about the simulation center. One thing is the simulation center is literally brand new. It is literally just opened a matter of weeks ago, actually, I think, hasn't it, Helena? I don't know if the guys already had the practice, practices of the cardiology or emergency. What I know this, this uh, blocks, they have, a, uh, they have a practices in a simulation center. Mm. So, and uh, gynecology, I suppose, not all of the higher years, uh, the, the fully, uh, fully are in a simulation center the first year, fully are dentistry, because they are really working only in a simulation hospital. In the fourth, fifth year, they start to work with the patients, but they have a simulator for everything. Mm. And uh, higher general medicine students, as I mentioned, there is a urgent, uh, urgent care, uh, cardiology and uh, something from the surgery. Uh, I do not know in this moment. And obstetrics and gynecology because they are giving birth simulators. So I do not know if Dylan and Ali they have these blocks uh, in a schedule. Yeah, yeah they've, they've they've got. In addition to what you said, they've got a uh, fully kind of kitted out intensive care ward. Uh, they've got a simulated operating theatre as well. Uh, as well. So um, yeah, it's really fantastic. I've had a look as well. And but um, for for the first year students, it's it's you will have classes for anatomy divided up either in the well, you'll have both in the simulation sensor where you'll have the, the virtual dissection table you saw, anatomage table, and you'll also be in the regular department as well, working with uh, cadavers and prosections. So you will you will be in there and for first aid as well. Um, Fantastic. Any, what I'm gonna do is really gonna push on now, guys, to ask anyone who's uh, participating at the moment, attending, can they ask any questions that they've got at all now? Uh, because in a, in a, it is now what quarter past six in the evening in the Czech Republic, and it's uh, the Czech Republic. They want to go home and have their uh, garden barbecues, etc., <laughs> on a glass of wine and a beer, etc. So if you can ask any <laughs> final questions now, uh, then <coughs> we can get those answered. Uh, and what I will say is, while you're thinking about questions to ask, it always the way after a presentation that you'll have a question uh, that you forget to ask. Simply drop an email to hello at medicaldoorway.com get in contact via one of our social media channels, whether that be Instagram, YouTube, on Facebook, et cetera. Or alternatively, then you can also uh, basically ask a question in the comments section of this YouTube channel. So any final questions? Okay, there don't appear to be any more questions now. We have just gone for just over the hour. With that in mind, I think I'll draw the webinar to a close. I wanna thank Helena and Susanna from the university. If you do study at the university or go through the entrance exams, you will meet these people very early on into, their, into your education and your enrollment. We also do pre-departure briefings to get you ready for your transition to university. We do them in person usually, and then we do also stream them via these methods as well. Last year's obviously was just done online through Zoom because of the epidemiological situation, but we do wanna get back to that face-to-face -face contact. Nothing can replace that really. It's a, a completely different experience and you get a lot more from it. But if you're a student from another part of the world and can't make that event in London, you will be able to take part in that actively as well. And we do hope to have members of the university here. We have had students in the, in the past come from Masaryk University to our pre-departure briefings. If you take a look at our YouTube channel, uh, look at our 2019 briefing, uh, one of our Masaryk students is on that as well. So in the end of the, oh, the bearded medic, I like that, Dylan. Uh, I like <laughs> yeah, to ask you me. Than mine, actually, and I'm a bit older, so I should be quite jealous of you, which I am. But, <laughs> Uh, might be, might be. We can. Uh, we forgot to mention that uh, in the first year we will accept around uh, around two hundred students in, all around the world. So please okay. do not expect that there will be only UK students. Always, it's uh, several students from the UK, of course. Then several from Norway, Germany, uh, Sweden, Portugal. 
uh, Japan, Spain, and, as well. and of course we have every year quite a lot of uh, students from Israel, Emirates, Japan, mm. Korea. So it's really, really international mixed. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So any questions at all, guys, you can either ask them straight to the university uh, or via Alter Mimsa through their Instagram uh, and Facebook profiles or directly with their website. But alternatively, if you want to have a follow up uh, half an hour consultation with Medical Doorway, you can actually book those now on the Medical Doorway website and they propagate straight into our diary. So if it's, if it's available on our system, you'll be able to book your appointment there. Alternatively, if you want to make an application, you can make that on the Medical Doorway website. Our service is free of charge and we will be there with you on site in Brno in your enrollment in October as well, provided we're all able to travel. As I said, I'm halfway through my vaccination now, so pretty soon I'll be freed. Anyway, I want to say thank you to everyone who's attended today from around the world, who's joined us on uh, YouTube, who's joined us on Facebook as well as uh, the students who've given up their valuable time to speak to us today and to give us that insight, which is truly unique, uh, which we've all got a great deal from. So thank you so much. Uh, I wish you all a safe weekend and hopefully we'll see more of you as we go through the assessment procedures and processes and then eventually for your enrollment at Masaryk University between the 6th and the 9th of September this year. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thank you. Good weekend. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, guys. Thank you. Take bye care. Bye-bye.